there is so much that our community is suffering with right now. And there is so much that the church needs to begin to step up in order to offer them. And so this morning, I wanted to talk about stones. And stones are used in a lot of different ways throughout Scripture. They have a multitude of different purposes that are used throughout Scripture. And I I wanted to share just a few of those with you this morning. First of all, Genesis 31, 48. Then Laban declared, this pile of stones will stand as a witness to remind us of the covenant we have made today. This explains why it was called Gilead, meaning witness pile. The stones were used to symbolically bear witness of an agreement that Laban had. And so they were put there as a reminder. They didn't have cell phones, you know, to, to type in any kind of reminders, but it was there as a witness that the, it would be a reminder of the covenant that he had made. Joshua 4.3 says, Tell them, take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan, carry them out and pile them up at the place where you will camp tonight. And continuing from that in in verse 6, we will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children will ask you, what do these stones mean? So if you remember the story of Joshua, the, the priest crossed over, or the priest stood in the middle, and as the priests were standing in the middle, um, the, the water heaped up on one side and flowed down on the other. And then when all the people had crossed over, they were to take stones, one for every tribe of Israel, from the, the middle of where the, the lake was, where the priests were standing, and take them to the shore and pile them up. And it was supposed to be a reminder from one generation to the next of what God just did for them. And so they were to build a a memorial. And then in 1 Samuel 17, 40, talking about David, of course, he picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistines. And, of course, we all know what David did with those stones. He used how many to kill Goliath? One. Okay, he put it right there, and that's all it took with the power of God in that stone. And so stones were used to defeat the enemy in that case. And then Luke 19.40, he replied, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. What's Jesus talking about? Praise and worship. You know, they were saying, the people around were saying, tell people this, just be quiet. And he says, no. If, if they stay quiet, the stones are going to begin to shout out. And so stones can be... Uh, uh, it, it was used in, for Jesus' analogy that if you guys stay quiet, then they are going to be the ones that praise. And even as we were praising this morning, I don't want to let the stones cry out ahead of me. And that's why we need to really praise when we do it. Remember, praise, I think I told you last week, reminded you last week, praise is both what? Two things, seen and heard, okay? Praise has to be seen and heard. And so that's why we say, you know, you can move your body, you can raise your hands, you can shout, you know, that that becomes praise when it's done with a heart of thanks to God. 1 Peter 2, 5, and you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What's more, you are his holy priest. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God. So we are living stones. 
And how does that relate to us? We are being built into his temple. We were, we were building a spiritual temple by using us as living stones. And then Revelation 21, 14, the wall of the city had 12 foundation stones and on them were written the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So those stones were used as a foundation for to build something strong. When you build a house, you need to have a firm foundation. And so we use cinder blocks, we use stone, we use something that is strong in order to be able to hold the weight and the shape and everything else of the house. And so they all have a purpose to represent something. What do they represent? They represent the power of God, first of all. They represent witness. They represent the purpose of something. They represent a memorial to something, a weapon for something, a foundation for something. Meaning that they all stand for something to do with people. They're used for a purpose in dealing with people, and they represent something in people's relationship between God and his people. Now, we had a survey that did, did the survey get filled out with everybody? Do you know? I think Peter, just about. Okay, can I have those survey slips wherever they are? Did somebody go get them? We filled out a sur little survey slip. Did anybody not get one? Today, this morning. It was just a little wee thing. Okay. Who did, who did do one? Okay. So on those slips, I asked you, what do you think is the greatest need or crisis in our community, in our region? Okay, and you were supposed to just write down what, whatever you thought. Okay, so I'm not sure where they are, but what are, I'm, I'll just ask you, you can shout it out. What are some of the greatest needs or crisis that you think are within our community? Just, sorry? Housing? What else? The youth, okay. Loneliness, thanks. So the ungodliness in our youth, okay? People need deliverance. What else? Salvation? Okay. Love, kindness, yep. Yeah. Healing in families and marriages, yes. Absolutely. Anything else? Sorry? Truth? Is that what you said? Truth? Okay, truth needs to be heard. Anything else? Poverty? Suicide? Pardon me? Hunger? What's that? Addictions. That is huge. Okay? So we've identified a lot of different needs right within our own community. And we as living stones need to represent Jesus to this community. That means we need to be a voice. We need to share. We need to take the gospel out. We need to give them truth. They need to know the truth because the truth will set them free. The truth is they don't need to stay living with addiction. They don't need to stay living with the things that they need deliverance from. They don't need to stay living with fear. They don't need to stay living in a place of utter poverty. They don't need to stay in, in any place where they have find, where they find themselves. They don't need to stay living with that, that spirit of death hovering over them, just waiting for them to take their own life. And people are living unnecessarily because they don't know with all of these things. 
And so the church needs to get a heart for those people. Jesus has a heart for those people. Jesus' heart cries out for the lonely and the distressed and those who are impoverished, those who are just waiting for that moment when they release themselves from this life. Their, Jesus' heart, I believe, is crying out for those people. In Scripture, his heart had compassion for those people. And so we need to love what he loves, hate what he hates. We need to have the compassion. We need to know his heart. We need to experience his heart, don't we? And so I've brought with me stones of every different size and color taken from the ocean out east. Some are big, some are small. Some have more color than others. Some are pretty rough. Some are soft and smooth. Some have some holes and things that are damaged. Some are just really flat and don't look like much of anything. These stones this morning represent all those people. Some have big issues, bigger than others. Some are just struggling a little bit and it wouldn't take much for them to be set free. You know, they're right there. Some are pretty rough and gruff because that's what they've known in life. Some are pretty hard. Some look kind of kind of pretty. You know, if you if you cut it open, I wonder if there would be you know, a different set of multicolors in there, but it, it looks like it could even be a shape of something. You know, there's, there's all different ones. And these stones this morning represent all the different people that we've identified in our community. And to know that at one time, and at any given time, you know, any one of these stones could be you and me. I could be in one of these stones representing people out there. You could be. And if you were in that position, wouldn't you want to know the truth? The only difference is that we've come to know the redemption of Christ who gave us hope beyond our circumstances. But aside from the grace of God that brought you to that place of salvation, any one of us could be headed for a lost eternity. And so our hearts need to start breaking for these people. And chances are you probably know somebody personally who could be one of these rocks. And so this morning, I told you we were going to do something a little different. But I... I, I I want us to begin to have the heart of Jesus for our community. Because when our heart starts to bleed for those people out there, then we begin to know what revival is. Revival is not only seeing people within the church get liberated, Revival is seeing the community get liberated. Unless we have people that are coming in and receiving Jesus as their Savior, we can't call it revival. 
we can be renewed, we can get excited, we can be restored as a church, but we can't call it revival until there is salvation in the house. And so our hearts need to start to break for those out there so they can come in here and know what we got. And in order for that to happen, we can't just stay in here. And that's why outreach is so important. That's why it's, it's so important for us to, you know, step out of our comfort zone and just go talk to somebody. Get into purposeful, meaningful conversations with people. The waitress that comes to your table. The person you're standing behind in line. Just purposefully get into meaningful conversations, intentional conversations, so that we can start to introduce Jesus to them. And so I wonder who in here would say that you have a passion for those in poverty? Can somebody come up and take this stone and just stand up here with it? If you have a passion for people in poverty, that's, that's where your heartbeat is. Okay, let's stand anywhere up here. Addiction. Marriages and families. Those co contemplating suicide. Okay, you can join her. Move this. Youth. How about seniors? about children and our education system. Both can stand together. How about those in financial distress? How about those that are suffering with disease and sickness? <laughs> I think that's a big one. Maybe y'all can have a stone for that. How about those living in fear? Got two for that one, too. Mental health. How about the churches? Our churches really. Ah. <laughs> wow. 
the churches are going to need to know how to stand in our day. The churches are going to need to be able to have wisdom. Did I miss anything that you can think of? The lost. Okay. You're going to take the lost? Absolutely. Okay, we got a couple more. Did I miss anything? The unborn, absolutely. The backslidden. Okay, somebody take the backslidden. Anybody want the backslidden? You want that one instead? Okay. Okay, that's all our stones. <laughs> it's a lot of needs in our community. So we want to pray for these things. Is there anybody else that wants to join any one of these? Like there's more room if anybody wants to partner in with any of these. We need God, people. We desperately need God. So would you join me as we pray up here? Would you lift your voice with me? This is not a time to let the stones cry out. This is a time for all of us to cry out. And so if you have a voice, then I'm asking that you would use it in partner with us as we pray. Okay? And we we are going to declare up here. And you guys are all going to use your voice with me. I don't want to be the only voice in this room. Okay? You guys are all going to use your voice just to partner with me and cry out with me. Okay? All right. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Father, we took communion this morning, and we took it because we have been redeemed. We took it because we know the power and the blood of Jesus. We took it because we know that your broken body, Father, is is what will set us free. It's what will heal our disease, God. And we believe, God, that you are the healer. We declare that you are the great physician in every capacity, whether it's mind, whether it's body, whether it's spirit. God, you are the great physician. You are the healer. You are the deliverer. You are the one who sets free. You are the one who draws the lost. And so God, we declare and we ask God, we petition you, Father, this morning in the name of Jesus, that you would come and do a work in our community, that Father, you would come and that you would break through, break through in, in this community, Father, that your word can go forth, that truth can be heard, Father. I pray God, that breakthrough would come for those who are suffering, God. There is such suffering. And so, God, I pray, Father, that you would break through in their circumstances, God. I pray for financial breakthrough, God, for those who are living in poverty, God. I pray, God, that you would meet their needs, God, that they would turn their eyes to look towards heaven, God. Your word says that you own the cattle on a thousand hills. And so, God, you are not with empty pockets, God. You can fill their cupboards. You can fill their need, God. And so, God, I pray that they would turn to you, Father, for their financial needs. God, I pray for those who are suffering with addictions, God. I pray, Father, that the power behind every addiction would be broken in the name of Jesus. That, Father, you would set the captive free. That the prison doors, God, would be swung open. That they would not have to look to alcohol or drugs or any other substance, God, in order to fill the need that only you can fill, God. Father, I pray that you would draw them into a place, God, where they meet Jesus. God, I pray that you would send somebody there 
their way. Send us their way, God, that we might be used as living stones in your house, God, to be able to declare the truth of your word that can set them free, God. Lord, I pray for those who are contemplating suicide. Lord, I pray that the spirit of death would be broken in this community. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray that life would spring forth in this community. And that, Father, there would be those, God, that even at the last minute would come to know Jesus. And the noose would be not used. Or the gun would not go off, Father. Whatever the means, Father. I pray, God, that suicide would be banished in this community in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, God, for those who are lost, those who are broken. Father, I pray that they would find the Savior who can bring them healing and deliverance and set them free, God. Lord, I pray, God, that your spirit would move in a powerful way. God, we are looking forward to revival in our community, Father. And so as we look for that, God, we pray that you would send them here and that you would send us out. Your word says that you sent out your disciples, God, to preach the word, to bring healing, to save, to bring deliverance, God, from those that struggle with demonic powers. And so, God, I pray that you would send us out. God, as we become equipped, Father, I pray that we would be your hands. We would be your feet. We would be your voice, God. And you would put that word of truth on our minds and in our hearts, God, for the time, for such a time is this, God. I pray for divine appointments, God, that we would have divine appointments with people, God, where you would orchestrate every circumstance to bring us together with somebody that we can speak truth to them in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you that you are able to do all of these things, Father. You are able to bring healing to those who are sick and suffering. And so, God, I pray that you would minister deeply to this community. Father, as we do the outreach, as we have the Women's Breakthrough Weekend, Father, I pray that there would be many, 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 many people who would be set free, healed, and sent, God. And, Father, we just know that you have a plan and a purpose for this community. We know, Father, that you have a plan and a purpose for every person in this community. And you have a plan and a purpose for this church, God. You have established us here. You have established Higher Heights Christian Fellowship for a purpose. And, Father, we want to live out that purpose. And so, God, we call forth every prophetic word that has been spoken over this house, that, God, it would come to fruition in the name of Jesus, that, Father, the doors would swing open, that your plans and your purposes would swing open, God. God, I pray for a breaking in the atmosphere. God, that your word can go forth in power. And so, Father, we just thank you that you are in the healing and deliverance business. You want to see this happen as much or more than we do. And so, God, we submit ourselves to you. We humble ourselves under your mighty hand that you might raise us up in due time. And so, God, we call in the harvest right now. We declare that there is a harvest in this region, and we call it in right now in the name of Jesus. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe, the harvest is ripe, and we need to be ready workers in your vineyard, in your fields. And so, God, I pray that you would send us out, God. Lord, I pray that you would forgive us, God, where we have been sitting down when we should have been standing up. Forgive us, God, for not taking into consideration all of those people. I pray, Father, that we would be humbled in your presence, God, and that you would break our hearts for what breaks yours. God, give us your heart for those people. Give us your heart, Jesus. I pray that you would increase compassion within us, that you would increase, God, our vision to see what it is that you want to do. Give us your eyes to see and your ears to hear. God, we need to have your eyes and your ears to know what you are saying to the churches today. And so, God, we call forth every Every, 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 everything, every plan that you have. And thank you, God, that you are a God of abundance. You don't want to give in just little bits and trickles, God. You want to give in abundance, God. And so open the floodgates, God. Open the floodgates of heaven over this place. And we thank you, God, in advance for what you are about to do. We thank you in advance, God, that this house will be full. Every chair will be filled with people that are hungry, that are seeking, that are pursuing doing Jesus, that want to an, an encounter with your presence. And so, God, we declare it to be so in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And everyone said, amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Well, we're going to keep these rocks set up where they are visible as a reminder of what 
You know, we're, we're being commissioned to take what we know out there. We're being commissioned. And so ask God to increase your compassion. Ask God to give you insight. Ask God to send somebody your way that you would be able to take truth to. Amen? In Jesus' name. Thanks, everyone. You can lay your rock on the altar. Symbolically, we are laying those people on the altar of God. God good and I am so looking forward to what God is going to do I am so looking forward to how he is going to fill this house with hungry hearts yes amen and amen you know I, I'm I'm just I just play with my imagination you know what what happens if we get so full we have to go to double services wouldn't that be cool yeah. Or what, what would it look like if we had so many youth that Saturday night was their church night? Wouldn't that be good? That's what I see in my mind. And when I think about children's ministries, I think about children downstairs having times of worship and laying hands on one another. And I think of those classrooms are not big enough. They're too small, aren't they? And so I have big vision. And I hope that you will come alongside me in that vision. Because, you know, together if we grab the heart of God, all things are possible. Amen? Amen. Do you sit and stand with me? We're going to close with a song. I know it's been a little different this morning. But sometimes we just need to do something different. Yes, different is good. So we're going to close with a song.